Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 19 through 27. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry land. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he is hurled into the sea. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. And he threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. And there the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees, I will not bring it on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians, for I am with you. Then they came to Elam, where they were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. The word of the Lord. Thank you, and you may be seated. We often hear the phrase, God won't give you more than you can handle. However, a few years ago, I, I met a woman in one of my previous churches, and she was telling me about when her youngest daughter was born. Her daughter was born unexpectedly, well, not unexpectedly, her daughter was born, and they didn't know before she was born that she was going to have Down syndrome. So she found that out upon Ella's birth. And as this woman sat in her hospital room, she told me, holding her newborn baby, scared, afraid, unsure, her sister came in and she was telling me that she was talking about, you know, they say God never gives us more than we can handle. I don't know. And her sister turned to her and said, that's garbage. That saying is complete garbage. She said, in a, instead of thinking of it that way, think of it this way. God is going to give you the strength to handle the situation you've been given. That's a phrase that I have found to be more suitable God will give us the strength to handle the situations we've been given. I know in my short 34 years on this earth, I've been through a lot of crud. I've been through abuse. I've been through trauma. I've survived things that nobody should have survived. And the only way I can think of getting through those things is because God has given me the strength to get through each and every one of those situations. In our scripture reading today, we read about God meeting the needs of the Israelites as they were leaving Egypt. Prior to the, the parting of the Red Sea, they had been slaves to Pharaoh. They had been beaten and abused, and some were probably even killed for not doing their weight, according to the Egyptians. But God was with them all along. God was providing for, with their needs all throughout. You see, God will give us the strength to handle the situations we've been given, just like he did the Israelites. God was with Moses. He met him at the burning bush and said, I'm going to use you. Moses said, I'm not a good speaker, God. I can't do this. I can't do this. God said, have no worry. I'm going to help you. I've got you. So God used Moses. Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said no a number of times. And God said, I'm going to bring these plagues upon the land. There were ten plagues. Finally, the tenth one, and God told Moses to tell the Israelites, if you put the blood of the lamb over your doorframe, the angel of death is going to pass over you. I'm going to provide for you. Your firstborn will not die when you do that. Well, that happened to the Egyptians. Their firstborn died. God provided for the Israelites. This was their out. Pharaoh had had enough. He was done. He said, get out of here. Hurry. Go. He had, so the Israelites, they had already been prepared to be packed and go. They were on their way out, and God was leading them. He was a cloud by day 
and a pillar of fire by night because they had no idea where they were going. The only direction they had was God. God was providing them those directions. God was meeting their needs. <laughs> so then Pharaoh at some point got a little bit antsy and he realized what was happening. He had nobody to do the work. So he said, uh, let me go get them. And he sent his army after the Israelites. Well, as they were coming, God put a wall between Pharaoh's army and the Israelites. And he had Moses lift up his arm to part the Red Seas. So the Israelites walked on dry ground through the Red Sea. And then God closed it as the last Israelites came across and Moses was across. And then at that point, Pharaoh's army was kind of in there and they all, they all drowned. God provided for the Israelites. He provided those needs. Our scriptures are full of, of examples of how God has provided needs. We look at King David before he was king, when he was up against Goliath. God provided him. You know, King Saul had said, here, put on this armor. And God said, no. <laughs> that armor was too heavy for David. He was a little guy. So God said, here, use your slingshot. Slingshot and a stone took down a giant. Something so small. God provided that need. We have Daniel in the lion's den. God shut the mouths of those lions because the, the people in Babylon were so jealous of Daniel's relationship with the king. They were so jealous, and they decided they were going to find a way to trap him. And that's when they appealed to King Darius's um, ego, his ego. And they said, they should be, we should be bowing to you. If anybody's praying to anybody else, they need to be thrown in the lion's den. And King Darius went along with it, not thinking about his friend Daniel. And then when Daniel was found praying to God, they said, hey, King Darius, your buddy Daniel's praying not to you, but to his God. And so King Darius had to abide by his own law, and he threw Daniel in the lion's den. Surely, Daniel would have been killed. But when they went the next morning to check on him, not only was <laughs> Daniel not killed, but he was able to, the, the mouths of the lions were shut. God provided for Daniel. God provided for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. <laughs> you think of furnace, and I, it was super hot. I don't know how many degrees, but enough to kill people. But not only did they, they not survive, not a hair on their head was even singed. God provides. God is so amazing. And then as we move into the New Testament, we have, you know, Jesus providing all these miracles for all these people who just needed to be able to walk. They needed to be able to see. And God used Jesus to do those. And then we have the Apostle Paul, one of my favorite Bible characters. Paul survived a lot. Not only did he used to be a dictator and, and um, kill Christians, but then God turned that, and all of a sudden, Paul became, or Saul became Paul, and he became one of the greatest apostles. He became somebody who rang out the story of Jesus. In Acts 16, we read about how Paul and Silas were, um, they were traveling through Macedonia to uh, spread the gospel. They were on their missionary journey, and they encountered a girl who, had, who was full of the Spirit. She had the gift of divination, it says. She was a slave girl because of this gift. Her masters were using her to make a profit. Well, she saw Paul and Silas, and she said, these are men of God. They are men of God. <laughs> Paul got annoyed because she was following them. You ever think of somebody that looks up to you, and they're following you everywhere, and you finally get annoyed, and Paul said, enough. And he, he knew that the spirit was in, or the demons were in there, and he said, come out. And so the spirits left her. And then when they left her, her master saw that she no longer had that gift of divination, and she was of no use to them. And they lost a prophet. So what did they do? They had Paul and Silas arrested. They were thrown in jail. One of many times Paul was put in jail. <laughs> and in that time, they were in the jail one night singing well into the late night, early morning, singing hymns and psalms and just worshiping God and praising God. Because even in the midst of trials, God was providing for them. 
even in the midst of a hard time, they saw it fit to thank, be thankful and serve God. God caused an earthquake to happen. The jail cells were wide open. <laughs> and the jailer, he looked and he was, took out his sword and he was getting ready to kill himself because prisoners escaped. And as he did that, Paul called out. He said, wait, hold on. We're all here. You have no need to kill yourself. And God was able to use that moment. He provided this moment for Paul to be able to share the gospel with this jailer who then believed, believed. <laughs> but the biggest need of all that God has provided for us is Jesus. We have a problem. We have a sin problem. And God provided Jesus to take care of that. He sent Jesus here as a tiny baby 2,000 plus years ago. Jesus came as that tiny little human. He grew up. He was raised in, in the scriptures that they had. So oftentimes I have to remind myself that Jesus didn't have the same scriptures we had. He was, you know, the story's about him. So he was doing the Jewish law. And I have to remind myself of that because there's a disconnect with that sometimes. Jesus grew up going to temple. He grew up celebrating Passover. But then it came his time to shine. That's when we start reading about the miracles that Jesus did. We read about how Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, tried to get him to sin. Jesus didn't fall for it because he's perfect. He's God's son. He came to suffer and die for you and me and everybody in the world. Jesus came to solve that sin problem. I so often, as I read the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, I think about those hours he spent on the cross. He wasn't up there as long as others who were crucified, but he had the biggest burden up there. I often think as he was lay, uh, nailed to that cross, all he could see is names, my name, your name, our neighbor's names, everybody's names, with a list of their sins going in front of him. And during that time, he was taking those onto his shoulders. And that's when that burden just, he took care of it for us. He took care of that so that we can have hope. Three days later, this is the best part of the story, three days later, Jesus rose again. He didn't do it with the help of somebody else like Lazarus. Lazarus was raised by Jesus. Jesus rose himself because he's the son of God. This is the exciting part of the story. This is the reason to be so happy because it gives us hope. We have hope. Jesus is giving us that biggest need. In a world today where we are increasingly seeing Christians being condemned and persecuted and told that our beliefs are, are bigoted and, and a slew of other things, we still have hope. We have hope because Jesus is, is still Lord. He's still ruler. But you know what? With that comes also responsibility. We have salvation. God has given us so much. We all have homes. We don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. We don't have to worry about sleeping on a ground with water leaking through a tent. We don't have to worry about, you know, if we have to wear the same outfit five days in a row. And, and we don't have to worry about so many things. We are such a blessed people. And with all that God has done, all the needs that he's provided, God only asks that we give a percentage of that back to him. And there's a number of ways that we can do that. Tithing, first of all, comes to mind. We're, we're going through our commitment time period. And I urge you, if you have not done your commitment card, please get that turned in. That way this church can go and be a world changer. That we can spread the gospel, spread the good news, spread the hope. Help others see that Jesus is going to provide their needs, that God is going to provide their needs. I urge you to do that. Giving back through service projects. Operation Christmas Child is coming up next week. We're going to have our packing party. And with that, we have these little boxes. And you would think, oh, it's just a box with some toys, maybe a t-shirt and, and a washcloth. But do you know it goes further than that? Samaritan's Purse not only gives these children these shoes boxes, shoe boxes, but they follow it up with discipleship. 
they are continuously reaching these children and showing them the love of God and how God can provide their needs. Hands Against Hunger, just down the road here, when we go and pack meals, those are going all over the world, and we're able to provide meals for kids who may not otherwise have them. It's another way of providing a very basic need and yet sharing them, sharing the love of Jesus with them. It's a way of God helping their needs. We have a team getting ready to go to Haiti in January. We're going to be building houses and wells and other things. Our friends in Haiti, as we know, have not only been through that devastating earthquake six, almost seven years ago, but they just also endured Hurricane Matthew. So there's many, many needs in a country so poor that just doing something so simple as providing a house where we could probably fit 10 or 20 of them in this room for them to live in. So simple, yet so much. God is providing their needs through us. We are his missionaries. Regardless of where we are, we are his missionaries. This is our mission field. When we leave this church, we never know who we're going to encounter. And God tells us that we may not know. He may send people for us to, to provide for, and they may be his angels. Just to see if we're living out God's word. Blessings is another way I can think of that we can give back. When's the last time you said a blessing over your child or your spouse? I've been thinking about this a lot lately. It came up. I was at, at a conference recently, and they talked about that. There is a, one of my professors was giving a breakout uh, session at this conference, and she talked about at a church she was visiting once, their children's director in between services brought families in and would have them, she would say a blessing over them, and then she would hand it out to them on paper, and then they would practice saying it to, uh, to their neighbors, to their families right there, and then they would go home and have that to say over their families every day. When's the last time you prayed a blessing over your, your spouse or your, your child? These are just small things that we can do. God is continuously providing our needs. I moved here to Cincinnati, I was 19. <laughs> I moved 10 and a half hours away from my parents when I was 19 years old into a place. I didn't really, I knew a few people, but not very many. And uh, I was staying with a friend up, at, up here in Sharonville, actually. And then uh, she was also 19. We, we had been uh, sweet mates in, at Cedarville. <laughs> and we didn't know much about money. <laughs> we didn't know much about anything. And she eventually, essentially got evicted. And so we ended up having to find other places, and we, we had kind of created a network at that point, and they were able to help us find places to stay until we could find one of our own. God kept providing my needs. I didn't, have a, I didn't have any money. Half the time my account was overdrawn. I had no idea where my money was going. I knew nothing about budgeting, nothing. But God kept providing. He kept, <laughs> people were blessing me with, furniture for my apartment, sometimes taking me out for a meal, small things. God kept providing. And because of that, I, that's where I find it so necessary to give back as much as I can. My husband and I aren't rich by any means of the imagination. <laughs> but we try to give back as much as we can because God keeps providing our needs regardless.